for the previous eight years. Richard continued to spend, spend, spend in pursuit of his military ambitions. A lot of it went on this castle in Normandy, Chateau Gaillard, state-of-the-art residence built in 1198 to defend his territory in northern France. Historian Pamela Marshall shows me around. Richard was besotted with this castle. Yeah. Remember, he's a military man, that's his main interest. And this is his opportunity to design his own castle. Was Richard pretty pleased when he'd done it? Oh, yes, he was as pleased as punch. And as it was nearing completion, he got his best mates in to come and see his, his daughter of a 12 month. <laughs> so he calls the castle his daughter. <laughs> he calls the, the castle his, his daughter, yeah. He was as proud as a new father of this castle. And as fathers often do with daughters, Richard spared no expense on her. He poured £11,500 into the building of Chateau Gaillard. That's more than ten times what his father used to spend on new castles. Chateau Gaillard dominates the valley. Richard clearly intended it to be seen as a potent symbol of his overlordship of the region. In the tower at the very top of the castle, Richard had his command center. It only has one huge window, it's very ruinous now, but it must have been a magnificent window stepped back. And it's my belief that when Richard was holding court, he would have sat in this window with his vassals paying homage to him, as if he were in the proscenium arch of a theater. The light behind him, very dramatic. <laughs> but he didn't enjoy his castle for long. About a year after Castle Gaia was finished, Richard was killed in a typical squabble with one of his vassals over some buried treasure. Having nothing better to do, Richard attacked the vassal's castle, and one of the defenders, using a frying pan as a shield, shot him with a crossbow. To get him out of prison, his subjects had stumped up a fortune, literally a king's ransom. And now Richard goes and throws his life away over nothing. Richard had absolutely no interest in the business of government. His attention span was strictly limited for anything that didn't involve people getting killed. He was King of England, but he was scarcely an English king. The empire that counted for him was Anjou, Aquitaine and Normandy. England was just an appendage that he used as a milch cow. He was a failed crusader and, by all accounts, a thoroughly nasty piece of work. So why do we think of him as a good king? <laughs> well, the medieval monkish chroniclers gave him a good press because he promoted the Crusades. The Victorians admired him as an empire builder. But it's curious that the English banner should still contain the three lions that was the badge of a man who had nothing but contempt for England. And here he is at last, the king nobody's ever heard of. King... Wait, 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 wait! There's another Richard we need to look at first. People often forget about him, but in many ways, he's the most 